Hello students, back to tell you guys about the balancing piece of balancing chemical equations. So here's the thing, we've been working on the aqueous solutions lab and we've been working on writing neutral ionic compounds. You guys have had a lot of practice so far. You also know about how to write equations, how to write um, barium chloride plus strontium nitrate equals this. Okay, um, so what's wrong with the picture here that shows um, potassium chlorate yielding potassium chloride and oxygen. What we're going to look at is how to balance chemical equations in this second half of the lecture, or how to make every element or polyion have the same number of atoms on both sides of the equation. So let's look at a combustion reaction. I'll show you guys a little video of how I balance this equation. So we're going to look at a combustion reaction. This is an unbalanced equation for a combustion reaction of Methane and oxygen. Oxygen always is present in a combustion reaction, as is a CH molecule. This one happens to be methane, which is CH4. The products in a combustion reaction are always CO2 and H2O, carbon dioxide and water. Okay? As we're looking at this, we can tell just by looking that there's one carbon on this side and one carbon on this side. So we don't have to worry about that because there's the same number of carbons on each side. Unfortunately, there's four hydrogens over here and only two over here. So that's going to be an issue as we're trying to balance this. The other thing that's going to end up being an issue is oxygen, but we always want to do oxygen last. Okay, so let's look at the number of hydrogens we have. So the easiest way to balance hydrogen is going to be to say, well, we can't change water as a molecule. We can't just say that it's H4O. But we can add a second H2O molecule and say that there's two H2Os in this equation. So now we have two, four hydrogens that add up to the four hydrogens that are on this side. Now what we've messed up is the fact there's one, two, three, four oxygens on this side, but only two over here. Does anybody know what we might be able to add on this side easily that will balance this equation? If you guess oxygen, one oxygen molecule, you're correct. And so balancing chemical equations is accomplished by changing only the coefficients not the formulas. So if I were to take uh, this carbon dioxide and say I want three oxygens, you know, I, just, I could just add a, a three, you know, I just, uh, no, you can't because that makes it carbonate, CO3. Okay, you can't be changing stuff around if you add, uh, I have this on the slide here, if you add, if you have two oxygens on one side and water on the other, um, and you want to make the oxygens equal, you can't just add two down here. Because that says now that there are two oxygens in this compound, which makes it hydrogen peroxide, which will kill you, unlike water. So, um, another little side note, too. Um, if there's nothing there, then it means one. So, if you just see this in an equation, it means one oxygen. Uh, or, in other words, one O2 molecule. And everybody knows what a coefficient is, right? A coefficient would be the number in front of something that tells you how many of that something you have. So if it says 4x in algebra, then it's saying that there are 4x's, okay? If we think of CH4 as an x, then there's just one. One coefficient says there's one CH4, which is methane, okay? Okay, I want to take a second to do some examples. I mean, it's not going to be a second, it's going to be a couple minutes, but... You know what I mean. Um, but before I do, I want to mention something that's not actually written in the, in the lecture, but something that you definitely need to write down. Um, so play this over if you need to. But what I will tell you guys is that because of the law of definite composition, we know that um, ions and molecules and compounds combine in very specific ratios for each other. So we know, um, for example, uh, let's look at this guy. Calcium plus nitrogen, oops, sorry, nitrogen N2, nitrogen yield uh, calcium 3, nitrogen 2. Okay, so we know that calcium and nitrogen combine in this very specific ratio of 3 to 2. Okay, we're going to talk about moles pretty soon. So it combines in a mole ratio, it combines in a mass ratio. Okay, this, this 3 and 2 is not a number that you're used to, but we will get there. Okay, so anyway. They combine in a very specific ratio, so what we have to do in figuring out um, limiting reagents and the amount we need to react, all of this, stuff like that, we need to be able to balance the equation. Okay, so that's what we've been working toward. So um, this one's actually pretty simple. There's two 
nitrogens on both sides. There's three calciums over here. And so we need to just add a third calcium over here, okay? So for every three calciums and two nitrogens, we get one molecule of calcium nitride. I've referenced this equation before. Um, potassium chlorate yields, so this is a decomposition reaction. It goes from one compound and breaks down into two. Uh, anyway, potassium chlorate breaks down to form potassium chloride and oxygen, uh, one oxygen molecule, okay? So again, we know that this is going to break down to form a very specific ratio of the two products when it breaks down. So we've got to look at, and, and something I haven't done yet, but you guys can see on the slide, um, is that you, it's going to be really helpful for you guys to put a little dash behind each thing that you're trying to balance so you know to fill in a number there. Whether it's a one, two, three, whatever you end up doing for a coefficient, it's really helpful to you guys to do this. The other thing that's really helpful is to write in pencil. Anyway, um, so we, if we look on both sides, we start with the most complex ion, or excuse me, the most complex compound, which is uh, potassium chlorate. Okay, so we know that there's one potassium and one potassium, so cool. One potassium, one potassium. We also can see from both sides there's one chloride, one chlorine, and one chlorine here. And then three oxygens and two oxygens over here. So we're a little off balance here. A little trick, a little trick of the trade here would be if there's three on one side and two on the other, it's a lot like your crisscross business. We can just put two. Let's say there's two oxygen. So we're saying that there's two of these, but it gives us six oxygens. And then the same over here, we crisscross it. Okay, and we say there's three O2s over here, which gives us six on this side. Okay, so now we have doubled the amount that we have over here for potassium chloride or chlorine. And so very simply, with because they're separate over here, we can just add a two right there. So our balanced equation is two potassium chloride yields two potassium chlorides and three oxygen molecules. Now we're looking at a synthesis reaction. Um, sodium combines with bromine to make sodium bromide. Okay, these also combine a very specific ratio. Um, sodium has a plus one charge and bromine has a minus one charge. So we know that those two are gonna combine in that specific ratio of one to one, okay? There's, this is the most complex molecule, so we start on this side, and it's pretty obvious there's one sodium and one bromine, okay? But there's one sodium over here, which is cool, but there's two bromines over here, so we've gotta do a little changing of this, okay? Remember, we can't change this whole thing, we can only change the coefficient in front of it, okay? So now we have two sodiums, which makes it very easy to balance, but we add, we add two over here, so now we have two sodiums on this side, two over here, two bromines or one bromine diatomic molecule and two bromines over here in sodium bromide. Okay, we've got to look at a couple more examples. I want you guys to get practice with me before you guys have to do these by yourself. So I need to mention a couple things before we go on to some more complex ones such as, uh, number one, treat polyions as one unit. I've been yelling at you guys about this a couple different times. Like I've talked to a bunch of you when you take SO4 and you move the 4 up and make that the charge. That's not actually the correct way to do it. SO4 is its own thing. It's polyatomic ion. Okay. It means it has uh, SO4 means it has one S and four oxygens and that doesn't change. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys this one way and then we're going to do another one a different way and whichever way works best for you, that's how you want to go with. Okay. That's the one you want to try, okay? The other important piece that I've mentioned uh, in earlier examples is to start with the most complex substance and work your way back from there toward oxygen and hydrogen. You want to save those for last. Taking a look at the example, uh, we have iron oxide and sulfuric acid combine. It looks kind of like a replacement reaction of some kind. It combines to make iron sulfate and water, H2, H2O, okay? Um, so let's look at the most complex one. I'm definitely going to call this one the most complex, okay? It's pretty crazy. Um, we've got two irons 
And so we've got to see this as one thing. So we've got three sulfates. Okay, so um, how do we go about equalizing this? We actually have two irons over on this side, so we're fine. Okay, um, but over here we've got only one sulfate. Okay, so I'm going to put parentheses around that just for the sake of argument, just to keep things straight. Okay, so there's three sulfates over here, and there's one over here. So very simply, we're going to add the three over here. So now we have three and three on each side. Okay, going over to, let's move on to hydrogen since we just did this. There's six hydrogens here, and there's two hydrogens here. Okay, so six over here, and two over here. So again, with the, uh, we, all we have to do is put a three over here, and then all of a sudden we have six hydrogens. Okay, so now we have sulfate balance, we've got iron balance at the moment, and we've got hydrogens, we have six on each side. Okay, so we've got sulfur and hydrogens, sulfate and hydrogens all are taken care of. So let's uh, go back. Now we've changed, because we did this over here, we've changed the number of oxygens to three oxygens on this side. Okay, three oxygens. Okay, and actually, what works out great is that there's already three oxygens over here. Uh, meaning that, if you guys have been following along, we have a balanced equation. We have one iron oxide, uh, mixes with three sulfuric acids uh, to create one uh, iron sulfate and three water molecules. Okay, again, we'll go through this. We've got two irons on each side. We've got three oxygens on each side. We have six hydrogens and three, three sulfates. Okay, a balanced equation. For this next one, we have, definitely we have a decomposition reaction. We have ammonium carbonate breaks down, de decomposes into ammonia, carbon dioxide, and water. So let's look at the most complex molecule first, which uh, hopefully is obvious, it is this one. Okay, we underline it. Um, and we've got, let's see, we have two ends on this side, which is not too bad. Two N's. We've got eight H's on this side. Okay. One carbon and three oxygens. Okay. So you guys see how I multiplied this out to get what's on the inside of this parentheses. Okay. So we've got two, eight, one, and three. Now on this side, we look at this split up. We have one nitrogen. So let's look at the nitrogens. We've got one nitrogen and two on this side. So let's add a two in the front here. So now we have two nitrogens and six hydrogens, okay? And there's actually two more hydrogens over here, so that gives us the eight that we need. So hopefully we can leave this just as it is. All right, there's one carbon here, one carbon here. There's three oxygens, which is what we're saving for last. Three oxygens and one, two, three oxygens here. Just like that, we've balanced our equation by going with the most complex first and then following up with whole number coefficients to make it a balanced equation. All right, so let's look at an example where we've got some somewhat complex uh, crisscrosses here where we're looking at um, sulfate. There's three sulfates and there's two phosphates here. Let's look at this in terms of an algebra equation where SO4, because it's in the parentheses, is just an X. Okay? I'm not crossing it out. It's just an X. Okay? And PO4 we'll think of as a Y. Okay, so in these parentheses we have x and y, y and x. Okay, so if we think about it like that, then we know that we actually have, we'll start over here, we have three x's and two aluminums. And on the same side, let's see, on the same side we have two y's and three magnesiums. And over here we have one, 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 and one, because they all combine in a nice neat ratio. Okay, so this one's going to be pretty simple to... Uh, organized. As long as we're thinking about this in terms of an X, we don't care that there's four oxygens in there. We actually care that there's three sulfates. Okay? So we've got two aluminums over here. We need to double this. Okay? So now we have two aluminums on the other side. Um, we have three sulfates over here, so we need to triple this to make three magnesiums and three sulfates over here, which uh, with that, we've simplified it to magnesium three y2, okay, 
and that's exactly the same number that's on this other side here. So we actually very simply, without looking at these things in the parentheses as polyions, looking at them as just um, a letter in this function, this chemical function or formula, um, it's really simple to, to see how these cross and how these recombine, especially when we don't want to be confusing our O3s and O4s. This comes naturally to me because I've been doing it a long time and I'm trying to break it down as best I can. So if you guys get confused, you have to come and tell me, okay? Come and talk to me individually and I'll help you guys, okay? Um, I've been doing this a long time, so I want to tell you guys and point out that you will only get good with practice, okay? You guys need to be doing this a lot to really get comfortable with it and to really get used to the idea of balancing equations, okay? Because what we're going to jump into after this is the mole and stoichiometry and you need to know how to balance equations.